Nerds 101. Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel, The FAQ Factory, where we research information about different things that we come across in our day. Today we decided to learn a little bit more about hummingbirds as right now we often catch a glimpse of them at the hummingbird feeder. They are neat to see and watch as they seem to hover in midair. So if you'd like to learn a few quick facts about hummingbirds, stay tuned to this video as we look at a few details about this adorable little bird. I'm sure many of you have seen hummingbirds and may even know quite a few facts about them. Most people know that they are small, colorful birds known for their unique hovering flight, rapid wing beats, and their ability to feed on nectar from flowers using their long slender bills. But did you know that just like bees and other insects, hummingbirds play a crucial role in pollinating many flowering plants and their presence is a key part of many ecosystems in the Americas. The Americas, North, Central, and South America, is where you'll find native hummingbird species. They have a wide distribution range and there are many different species of hummingbirds found throughout these regions. In fact, there are over 300 recognized species. It's important to note that ongoing research could lead to new recognized species or reclassification of populations, so exact numbers might change. Some well-known hummingbird species include the ruby-throated hummingbird, Anna's hummingbird, and the violet-crowned hummingbird, among others. Each species has its own unique characteristics and adaptations to its specific environment. Like other birds, some species of hummingbirds are migratory, meaning they travel long distances between their breeding and wintering grounds. The ruby-throated hummingbird in North America can travel impressive distances during migration. These birds travel from their breeding grounds in eastern North America to their wintering grounds in Central America, which can be a journey of up to 2,000 miles one way. Here's a pop quiz. Do you know what the study of birds is called? We'll give you the answer at the end of the video. Next, let's talk about those wings. It's one of the most fascinating things about hummingbirds. It's incredible to watch because the wings move too fast to even see them properly. Hummingbirds have incredibly fast wing beats, which are a key factor in their ability to hover and maneuver with precision. On average, hummingbirds' wings beat at a rate of approximately 50 to 80 beats per second, although this can vary slightly among different species. Some larger hummingbirds may have slightly slower wing beats, while smaller species can have even faster wing beats. To compare, the human heart beats on average about 60 to 100 beats per minute. The hummingbirds' rapid wing beats are what enable them to hover in front of flowers while feeding on nectar and also to perform impressive aerial acrobatics. These birds have specialized shoulder joints that allow their wings to rotate in a figure eight pattern, which generates lift on both the upstroke and downstroke of the wing beat, enabling them to stay suspended in the air. Many of us might grow specific flowers in the summer like salvia, fuchsia, hummingbird sage, or bee balm, to name a few, to draw hummingbirds to our yards. Most of us know that these little birds feed off of nectar found in these flowers, but do you know how? Hummingbirds have long, slender bills that are adapted for probing deep into tubular-shaped flowers. They also have an extendable tube-like tongue that can be inserted into the flower to quickly lap up large amounts of nectar. But did you know that hummingbirds also feed on insects and spiders? Insects and spiders provide essential proteins and nutrients to supplement their diet. They typically dine on bugs in mid-air or by gleaning them from leaves and branches. Gleaning is a term referring to a foraging technique used by some birds to capture small prey from leaves, branches, or other surfaces. A hummingbird can consume a significant number of insects daily, often totaling anywhere from several hundred to over a thousand insects in a single day during the breeding season when they need more protein for themselves and their chicks. The actual number can vary based on the size of the hummingbird, the types of insects available in their habitat, and their individual foraging success. We said that some hummingbirds travel long distances to breeding grounds. Hummingbirds reproduce through a process that involves courtship, mating, nest building, egg laying, incubation, and chick rearing. 
courtship. The courtship ritual begins with male hummingbirds performing elaborate aerial displays and flights to attract the attention of females. These displays often involve hovering in front of the female while making buzzing sounds with their wings and vocalizations. Mating. Once a female is receptive to a male's advances, mating occurs. Mating can happen in the air or on a perch with the male briefly mounting the female. Nest building. After mating, the female is responsible for building the nest where she will lay her eggs. Hummingbird nests are typically constructed in trees or shrubs and are made of various materials, including plant fibers, moss, and spider silk. The female shapes the nest into a cup-like structure. Egg laying. The female lays one or two tiny white eggs, which are about the size of a pea. The eggs are usually laid a day or two apart. Incubation. The female incubates the eggs by sitting on them to keep them warm. Incubation typically lasts for about 14 to 23 days, depending on the species and environmental conditions. Chick rearing. After the eggs hatch, the female continues to care for the chicks. She feeds them a diet of regurgitated nectar and insects, which provide the necessary nutrients for their growth. The chicks grow rapidly and fledge or leave the nest when they are fully developed, usually within 18 to 30 days after hatching. Post-fledging care. Even after the chicks leave the nest, the female may continue to feed and protect them for a period until they become independent. Exact timing and behaviors involved in hummingbird reproduction can vary among different hummingbird species. Some species may have slightly different nesting habits or incubation periods. Additionally, hummingbirds may raise multiple broods of chicks during the breeding season. This all depends on food availability and environmental conditions. Many people like to incorporate hummingbird feeders into their yards to attract these beautiful little birds. Proper maintenance is crucial, involving regular cleaning and replenishing of the sugar water solution to prevent spoilage and strategically placing the feeders in visible yet shaded locations. It's advisable to refrain from using food coloring and artificial additives in the nectar. Additionally, consider potential threats from predators, and if you intend to attract migrating hummingbirds, have your feeder ready during migration seasons. Overall, hummingbird feeders can offer intimate encounters with these remarkable creatures, but their use should be part of a larger effort to create a hummingbird-friendly ecosystem. So, do you know what the study of birds is called? The study of birds is called ornithology, which is a branch of biology. Ornithologists are scientists who study the behavior, physiology, ecology, evolution, taxonomy, and conservation of birds. Did you get it right? That brings us to the end of our video on hummingbirds. We learned a little about their habitat, reproduction, food, and physiology, and we hope you did too. If you found this video interesting or informative, give us a like below and follow us for more random fun fact videos. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, keep questioning. See you next time.